Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use Google Sheets and Google Finance in order to get some stock price information. Okay, so I've got a spreadsheet here set up in uh, Google Sheets. It's just a blank spreadsheet, and I'm going to create a table of information. Uh, I will have my stock symbol. I'm going to have the price. PE for uh, price earnings ratio, and I'm going to put in high 52 for the 52 week high. Now I'm writing these a little bit unusual. In fact, I'm going to go and write these in lowercase. Not that that's essential, but I'm writing these out because these are fields that are going to be used by the Google Finance function and they need to be in this particular format for this to work so we can see how this works let's go and put in a few stocks we can put down uh, obviously GOG for Google uh, VZ is Verizon NKE is Nike and um, I think just I think Ford is just F I believe we'll find out soon enough okay so I'm gonna go ahead and pick on my first cell here and I'm gonna start with my function equals Google Finance. Now there's a, they're not trivial. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. And there's an option way down here at the bottom to learn more about Google Finance. It's really worth, if you're really into this stuff, to check that out and see all the different things you're going to do. But I'm going to basically play around with this default format here with a few of the uh, arguments that I can put in to the Google Finance function. So I'm going to work it like this. I'm going to kind of get that out of the way so I can see. And let me uh, kind of just move this off to the side. I cannot. Let me close that. There we go. Okay, so the first thing it's, I'm going to need is my symbol. So the first parameter, I'm just going to click on the cell that contains my symbol, comma. Now I'm going to click on the cell that contains the attribute that I'm interested in. In this case, it's going to be price. So I'm going to click on cell B1, which contains my price, and I'm going to press F4 to make that absolute. Close my parentheses, press Enter, and I get what looks like to be Google's current uh, stock price. All right, I'm going to try this again for PE ratio. Equals Google Finance. I'm going to click on the cell that contains the symbol. I'm going to click on the cell that contains the attribute that I'm interested in, making sure that's absolute, closing parentheses, enter. I'm going to do this one more time with the 52-week high. Cell that contains the symbol, comma, the cell that contains the attribute, absolute, closing, perfect. And I will go ahead and select this, select all three of those, and fill them down. And they should grab data from the other symbols. And these seem pretty good. I haven't looked any of these up lately, but these do seem pretty realistic. And now you can kind of start to compare PE ratios, um, how is the stock trading uh, compared to its 52-week high. And there are many, many other attributes that you could put in. So that's pretty cool. Now let me show you another thing we can do with this Google Translate function. You can get historical data. So I'll just do this off to the side over here. And I'm going to start off with equals Google Trans uh, Google Finance again. And this time I will refer to, I'll just go to, I'll pick on Verizon here. So I'm going to click on the cell that contains Verizon's symbol, comma, and I want to get the price. Put that in quotes. Now I'm going to put in a start date. I'm going to put in a particular date I'll put in um, August 15th, 2016, comma, to today's date. But for today's date, I'll just use the today function, comma, and then I'm going to put in daily. So in theory, this is going to give me the daily stock price for Verizon from August 15th, 2016 to today. I'll go ahead and press Enter. It's going to think for a bit, and it's going to populate all of that data. Um, now it looks like I didn't go too far back, so I might have made a little mistake. So let me go back to my original formula, which is right up here, and I think it may have been important for me to enclose my date in quotes. So I'm gonna try that. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna press Enter, it's gonna think. Now we're getting all of the data that I was expecting. 
Okay, now if that's a little bit too much or maybe you don't want daily prices, I can go back and edit this formula again. Notice I've got the stock symbol or the cell that refers to the stock symbol, price, because that's what I'm interested in. Of course, you could have PE ratios or closing prices or 52 week lows or whatever. I've got the start date in quotations. I've got today's date, but instead of daily, I'm going to change this out to weekly. And what it's going to do, it's now going to give me end of week sales. So basically August 15th, I believe may have been a Monday of 2016. And it looks like now it's giving me all the Friday prices for uh, Verizon stock. And now that I've got this information, I could of course plug this in and start to make charts, things like that. So pretty useful tool and pretty powerful. There's a lot more you can do with this. So whenever you are working on the Google Finance function, make sure you click the help box that uh, Google Sheets is going to provide you. And they're going to give you a ton of different options or attributes you can put into that function.